Dude, I can't believe this guy's sleeping in again. This guy, dude. He never wakes up. Gosh, it's oh. classic cow fox. Alright. Dump him in the bushes. Yeah, what's the thing? <laughs> <laughs> I was dead. I was like, yeah. you were like, oh, he's sleeping, he's snoring or something. Yeah, he's gonna have a wet willy to wake him up. You know? Honestly, I was just waiting for them to like flip it and just be like, Broop, and like, yeah, dump I him wish they gave the him a concussion. <laughs> yeah, anyway, that was Energy, who used to be CLG. They're also playing against EG, who is four fifths new players. And we asked many players in the league what they thought the biggest roster move of the offseason was. So take a watch. The most impactful offseason roster move. Energy swapping their ball in. I think the most impactful offseason roster move just happened and it was me to FlyQuest. Vulcan. Vulcan. The Vulcan Vulcan to FlyQuest. I think it's Vulcan. Yeah. I'd probably say Vulcan to FlyQuest. Vulcan joining FlyQuest. I just think the FlyQuest and uh, EG support change is pretty funny. Vulcan to FlyQuest. I think that's, you know, Vulcan is really, really good support and it just seemed like FlyQuest bowling didn't have the synergy. So if Vulcan plus Prince do well, I'm sure it's going to be really, really good. Uh, 100 deals. New midliner, timeliner. I think the most impactful one would be 100 tips. 100 tips. Probably be quid. Quid for 100. Quid coming to 100 tips and someday. I think two very, very strong solo laners together with closer will be a good fit. Us getting someday. I just think he brings a lot to the team in terms of shot calling and macro game. And I think it's harder to see from outside, but I think that's going to help our team a lot. Digging to stop right now? Yeah, because he's my friend, so he's come any. Yeah, so excited. Well, we should dig it us and diamond to dig it us. And uh, because, uh, yeah, dig it us as well. I think probably IMT. The most impactful roster move would be ours or Immortals. <laughs> Solo to Immortals. <laughs> I would say EG's roster moves <laughs> definitely put them um, in a hard spot. Yeah, I mean, EG, I think was a pretty big one. I'd say maybe. Revenge to EG. Me coming to EG. Evil genius. Well, I think EG nuking their entire team is like pretty impactful. For EG men's. Evil genius for the Armao. EG. I didn't think they're gonna plus the button over, you know, four people out, you know? Okay, I'll do EG. I feel like those other moves aren't super impactful. They'll be like minor changes. But the EG changes, you know, could go either way. Most impactful offseason move gotta be EG, you know? Oh. EG, as Double have said, they just nuked their entire roster. A lot of people think that they have no chance, that they've made a huge downgrade, but I have some thoughts because EG is not as bad as you think. <laughs> <laughs> what the Let's hell? Let's revenge. So he's been described by many as underrated. And when I say many, I mean pretty much any top laner you talk to knows that this guy is very difficult to lane against. He's just never been on a winning team. Not his fault. He can only control the top lane. Also, he quit med school to become a pro player. Many people forget this, but I have a theory that people who are good outside of league are more likely to be good in league. It's like if you're a talented person, you know how to find success. He could find success in the medical industry, or was about to, but he decided league instead. And also, he actually usually wins lane more often than someday did in the spring split. Oh. Is it an upgrade? I'm not sure. <laughs> R. Mayo. He was actually 2-1 up on Blabber in the 2021 spring finals when he was subbing in for Santorum. People forget that. He won Proving Grounds back-to-back -back in 2022. Also, has a lot of LCS experience. Also, his name, Armeo, not Armao. Just think Armeo every time you have to think about that. And he won an LCS title last split, actually. He was coaching Cloud9 and learned a lot from Blabber. I had an extended conversation with Armeo after their Spring Split Championship, and he's going to have a lot of takeaways for this split. Moving on to their mid lane as Armeo has hit rank one multiple times. People already think he's good. Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whoa! <laughs> you don't really need supporting arguments. Unforgiven, they're bot laner. You may wonder, where has this guy been? I can explain it to you. 
he wasn't as popular as Doublelift. <laughs> oh, he might be better, but not as popular. So he was subbing. He was the first team LEC All Pro 80 carry a year ago. Wouldn't you say? It's pretty weird that he wasn't starting last split. He's starting now, so he's going to be pretty good. Also, we have Ayla, the support. OPL MVP of 2020, two-time Proving Ground champion, great person, and a great shot caller. He has also been criticized by pretty much everyone, so he needs to shut off those external noise factors and make it work. So that's it for Evil Geniuses. Not as bad as you think. Do you guys have any questions really quickly? What's my takeaway here? Yeah, well, what are we supposed to learn? Because you're saying not as bad Were as you think. Were you paying think. attention? We can go all the way back from the start. Were you paying attention? Look, maybe. A ha you have a clicker? Are you actually controlling Yeah, that? wow. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> They're not okay. as bad as you think. <laughs> that's the takeaway, right, Raz. Take that's the takeaway. Right. Take appreciate that. That's the takeaway. Okay. I put them fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Muchas gracias, Chad, and welcome back, y'all. We got a little cast of Swaparoo. It's your boy Rafa and Kobe on the desk here. We got two more games to close it out. Energy taking on Evil Geniuses. A lot of big takeaways going into this matchup. There, there are. I, I like how Jack outlined half of them in the in the presentation. Very at least, at least the Evil Geniuses half of it. Meanwhile, for the Energy half of it. The death of CLG weighs heavily on a lot of us. Okay. Um, okay, CLG is no more, but this is going to be the energy on stage for the first time here. Super excited to see what they can pull out. Uh, bottom lane swaps, a lot of them, you know, it was their own players saying that that was the most impactful move, but a lot of players <laughs> think that that was actually the most impactful move uh, was changing up their bottom lane. And indeed, uh, FBI and Ignar definitely could be huge, huge difference makers for this team. I've talked to this couple of the mm -hmm. players already, and uh, uh, they've been pretty hyped with, uh, you know, the, the early scrim results, at least. Yeah, ton of questions coming around for both of these bot lane swap ups. You're already talking about FBI coming in. I mean, this was a guy that has gone to multiple finals with 100 Thieves in the past before. So we know that this guy has been tested and he's been proven in the past, but then he started becoming more underrated and slept on when you have AD carries like Berserker and Prince running the league. Even Doublelift had a pretty darn good split with 100 Thieves last spring as well, but FBI wants to prove that he's still at the top of the table. Meanwhile, on the other side, it's unforgiven. He was in the NACL last spring while he was sitting behind Double Lift in 100 Thieves camp, but this guy was undisputedly the best player performing. I mean, for good reason. First all pro in LEC, 80 carry, I mean, that's a pretty big, <laughs> pretty big resume coming into the split. Yeah, there's a, a tremendous amount of hype uh, for this bottom lane as well coming into it. So going to be a very top tier matchup. I would also say, you know, that got to gloss over the Jojo Pyun hype because everybody already thinks he, he's good. Yeah. But I did really like that he went to Korea and started turbo grinding Korean Challenger yes, and very quickly jumped up uh, to the top of Korean Challenger. So he does seem like the, the fire's been reignited because I think the only questions around Jojo was never, you know, the ceiling of the talent of, of him as a player. He's, he's definitely one of the most, uh, you know, talented players for the possibilities here in LCS, if you can play it at his best. But sometimes it is, how serious is he taking it? How sick is he? Motivation, a lot of these different yeah. these different factors, focus uh, and cohesiveness with the team as well. So yeah. super excited to see what it looks like with such little time to build team synergies here uh, to, to see what they can uh, show on stage. And it's, it's definitely the biggest uh, roster swap that we've had for the summer. Four players swapping out for new players coming in, but two of those players, Armeo and Ayla, have time together playing on that very successful Team Liquid Academy run in Proving Grounds back-to-back -back champions. This was a duo that did a majority of the grunt work for their wins and dominance. I'm personally excited as, you know, coming from the challenger scene, really excited to see that duo kinship reignite on the stage today. Yeah, it definitely helps to have uh, some of those existing relationships, especially if, like Ayla, let's let's be blunt about it, did not have, you know, a great time tough. there with FlyQuest. Got in late, then got a ton of criticism because of the performance started lacking. So it really does help when you have teammates that have pre-existing, trusting relationships there with you to work. That's right.
and Ayla's got a lot to prove. I know he wasn't personally happy about how the performance turned out. I mean, some things being out of your control with visa issues coming in late, right? But then you already have mountains of expectations and pressure put on you when FlyQuest goes 7-0 and while you're not there and gone. You come in and you guys start losing games. It's very easy for the community to start finger pointing at everyone. And FlyQuest made their change, <laughs> but maybe a new start on this Evil Geniuses roster will be the key for Ayla to have a better split. Yeah, they're going to be hungry for sure. A lot of these players have a lot to prove you know a lot of these players feel like um you know they're getting another chance here especially you know, our coming back from coaching <laughs> once you once you get relegated to coaching sometimes it's very hard to, to get back <laughs> get back on stage yeah. but it was such a brief stint there with cloud nine able to jump right back in uh become a player again uh revenge as well uh see what see what they can do we are still of course uh, fixing up some things. There's quite a lot of, uh, a lot of to is that <laughs> toilet paper, tissue oh, paper God. all over uh, uh, JoJo's setup here. So uh, JoJo had quite the spill, apparently. <laughs> you can't get the keyboards. We'll work though. on that. <laughs> We're getting there. A little bit of mess on IL-3. The other thing on energy that I want to really highlight, even though the bot lane swap is massive for this team in terms of change, mm. I think a lot of people are sleeping on the fact that energy had a really good run in spring. They finished the regular season, I want to say fourth place. Something like that, yeah? So, yes. 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 Okay, thank you, thank you. Audience is confirming. I just want to make sure I didn't put false information on the internet. But the fact that energy has big shoes to fill. I think this is something that a team cannot be slept on again in terms of favorites like FlyQuest and Cloud9. All right, I've got an important update. These towels are not actually for any spill that had occurred. That is not the delay we're having. The delay is something else. These are just because JoJo now likes to wipe his hands a lot when he's playing League. <laughs> I think he's just really sweaty now. Does he get sweaty hands? <laughs> Ever since he was grinding over in Korea, yeah. So now he's got plenty to dry off. Uh, if there's any sort of moisture in the area, boom, soak that right up. Well, I hope the knees aren't weak or the mom's spaghetti isn't coming out either. Otherwise, we're in a hey! bad time. But we got champ select. Okay. Here we go. All right, Kobe, tell me. Nico has had a 98% presence rate globally. Does, does she actually get picked up or is she one of the first? Never mind. Yeah, Nico gets banned. <laughs> uh, either Zeri Yumi here, because Aphelios has already taken her off the table. There's a lot of pressure on bottom lane right now with the current meta. Milio, Yumi, Zeri, Aphelios are all very, very big issues. I do agree with Aphelios being just right out the gate your first ban because you're playing FBI. Yeah. Um, definitely his one of his favorite AD carry champions and extremely strong in the meta right now. Cassante also deserves to be there. Showmaker is happy. The Vive following, a lot of people have been dropping the bans on the Vive. Personally, I actually prefer the Maokai right now. Sure. With the Maokai build not being the demonic build. I think so many Evan people Shroud, right? need to go with the Even Shroud into the uh, Sunfire and Abyssal. It mm -hmm. amps so much damage for your team. You have so much CC, so much setup. Uh, in, in the team fight meta, it's it's incredibly powerful. And you're still a legitimate tank. You know, with Demonic Embrace, you have a lot of HP, but you don't really have any resistances behind it. But you know, Maokai might be something that either these teams go for. Armeo, no, we know that he loves his facilitator junglers. Sejuani, Maokai are definitely in that wheelhouse. Gragas is a great flex pick. Three ways that this could go for either Armeo, Jojo, or Revenge. Yep. Definitely a very good opener here. The most flexible champion in League of Legends, even though he doesn't look it. On the other side, <laughs> the Jack. Wow, that's actually, if he is that fully locked there? Because usually you pick the Gragas uh, to counter the Jacks and lane and handle Jacks up there. So uh, yeah, that's why it's just a hover over. Not gonna jump on that one. Don't wanna go into a, an already showing Gragas here. And they'll actually take the Annie side of it because Nico is banned. So that is kind of the premier yep. stun uh, setup, roaming mid laner here. And Milio currently is the best support. Yeah. I was surprised to see that some, some of the teams are letting it go so far down the draft ban phase, but it just all comes down to if you have a really strong marksman player to mm. pair it with. But there was a cat let through the ban phase. Who let that happen, guys? I thought we were not going to have any Yumi today. That's interesting, too. They're pairing it with the Lucian here uh, instead of like uh, the going for the classic Zeri combination with it being available. Since they're facing the, uh, the Milio, maybe they were worried about like Draven into it. Milio Draven is yeah. also uh, incredibly dominant lane. Uh, but because EG don't pick up the Zeri to go with their Yumi, that means that Energy get it with their Milio here, which is another really strong pairing. So that combined with 
any roaming power does look like a good one, two, three. Now into the second round of bans. Junglers are still needing to be searched here for both size energy, EG. I mean, technically, Gragas could still be flexed for Armeo if Jojo and Revenge want to splash. A little bit more physical damage, let Armeo be a solo AP threat on Gragas. Wukong being taken off the table, Nocturne. So you already see that both teams are aware that they need to diminish the jungle pool even further. Interesting here. If you're going to whittle down the jungle pool, uh, Maokai and Sejuani, very prominent right now. With it being an enchanter meta, and we already have two enchanters for bottom lanes locked in, it does put more emphasis on having CC, having setup come from your jungle position as well. Yeah. I guess the only like floating jungle carry still left would be the Kindred. Um, that is pretty prominent here, but... Uh, the Sejuani Maokai trade fairly likely as they ban out the Jace. They don't want them to have the AD option for mid lane. That's right. I mean, if you were to lock Kindred here with Gragas, that's a great combo because you can at least punch people out with that explosive cast and setup, but you still need someone to be a reliable frontline CC. Evil Genius is aware of that, at least for energy's side. Someone's got to be the tank. Someone's got to be able to walk up into those bushes late game and not get absolutely blown up by the damage that comes from the other team. Poppy would be a tank that fits in the role. Con and Contracts is also a big Poppy fan. Sure. <laughs> big, big Poppy fan. And it gives you a lot of priority around those objectives. Poppy ultimate opponent out so you can secure them pretty easily. It is technically also flexible right now. You can flex it to top side of the map. Yeah. Top side Poppy is, is also thriving. I feel like Doklo would want to play something a little bit more damage carry oriented though. So, but contracts if that is his poppy it does prevent a lot of other junglers that have mobility because you can always block them with the said fast presence don't play with my heart here okay all right so Sion being locked in now we're going to find out evil geniuses if this gragas is going to be in the jungle for our mayo and jojo is going to get something else as a counter pick option into the annie or before handshaking gragas and annie and getting something a little spicier for our mayo or just doubling down on frontline options we're on a little bit more damage here i would like uh, more damage for evil geniuses you're always looking at the level ones as well. All right. Yeah! All right. Armeo back in it. Brings out the Viego. Let's see if they can get those resets. Armeo is trying to beat the allegations that he's only a tank player. It's like, no, guys, I play carries too. Let me cook, man, on the main <laughs> stage. I'm back in the LCS. I got to do it all, all day, every day. Yeah, Jat was alluding to the fact that in his time coaching with Cloud9, has a lot of time there with Blabber to to bounce ideas back and forth. So it's definitely not a one-way street with yeah. coaches and players, especially yeah. when you do have players like Blabber. So see how much has gone the other way on that street. And then we have the final lock in here. Dokla does pick up the Orn into the matchup here. So I'm sorry, Rafa, it's not a bunch more damage, Damn. but Damn. <laughs> it is that security of massive, massive late game. You've got Orn upgrades here for Azari Melio uh, and plenty, plenty of frontline of CC, both engage and peel on their side. And it's not like this energy roster is unfamiliar with late game territory. A lot of the games that they won in the spring split, big upset ones where they just huddled and stalled it out until 40 plus minutes. If that's the territory they want to aim for, I mean, you've got one of the best marksman setups to do it with this area, right? All eggs in the basket for FBI, the newest addition alongside Ignar for this energy roster. Meanwhile, EG, I'm just gonna say from a spice standpoint, I love seeing Viego gameplay because no matter what the game state is, if you get that once reset, anything can happen. All right, can they make it happen here for EG? Just getting this squad all put together, blew up the entire roster in between the year here, between spring and summer. See what they can do on stage. Meanwhile, NRG, the organization trading hands, bottom lane switching as well, and looking to improve upon what they accomplished last year. FBI staring down his old org. He was let go, whereas EG, a bunch of new phases means a world of new possibilities for this summer split. Both of these teams not necessarily hyped up to be in the top three conversation, but they will do their damnedest to be a dark horse for the summer split as we take to the stage for their first game. Looks like we aren't going to have any sort of uh, shenanigans early on. No sweepers coming out for anyone starting either. All wards probably going to be the standoff here, even though Armeo is fishing around Raptors. Oh, prowling projectile. I don't think it connected. 
All right, we're just dancing. We're, we're having a good time here in the, in the river. Unforgiven and Ayla poising for a more aggressive take. I don't know if EG wants to go for a lead invade. I mean, there's a lot riding on this bottom lane for, for this entire split and, and the direction you want to go with for both of these teams. Yeah. You mentioned already FBI first game back out against his old organization. There were a lot of, you know, rumors flying around about the reasons why EG blew up the roster and uh, a lot of them, you know, surrounding not being able to you know, afford the big star power that they had. See if you can make them pay for it. Revenge and Armeo coming in and Dokla hits them. I, if Jojo uh, shoves wave hard here, he can get Pryo and then they can go for this delayed invade. I don't know how much they're looking to achieve off of it, but they're doing a decent job of bullying contracts and Dokla and preventing them from starting. But, but Armeo and Revenge are also delayed at the start as well. Yeah, pretty rough there for EG. They just get stuffed on their attempted steal of Raptors here, trying to utilize the Scion. Armeo even has to use his potion early there uh, on the Viego. Usually you want to save that for after you're clear for when you go for your gank so you can have more uh, all-in potential. Mm -hmm. And good defense there from NRG, defending those Raptors for contracts. Poppy got some nice buffs and is the reason why I started to get right back into it. Um, a lot of them were some of the uh, shock damage on the Q. So that big AOE that you use to instantly clear out those Raptors uh, feels quite nice. A curious start here from Armeo. He did wolves, got level two, and now he's on the bottom side of the map looking for red buffs. So I wonder if he wants to beat Contract to the punch and hitting bot lane first as, as a gank. He could skip all these camps once he hits level three and just beeline towards the bot lane. Look at the most, get some summoners burned. Yeah, Unforgiven right now, kind of trapped under tower with the Yumi on it. The Lucian uh, plus Yumi, pretty rare combination, uh, but should be able to scrap together the rest of the CS here as it is an early recall for FBI and Ignar. Be able to get that nice shove off. You get your little cheater off. Armeo bounces back, it's still level two. Does, does that have, have his flash? Could go for the... Does he have W? He should... I don't know if he started E or W second. We'll, we'll find out. They're looking for the gang body slam flash and they connect the W. Don't even necessarily need a flash, but Armeo gets it. The follow up and that's first blood for Evil Genius. Oh, he's got the W all right. Gets that stun, has the flash and they get Palafox. Not only the kill, his flash down for the Annie as well from mid lane. And we just so much of that early playmaking potential. Man, what a bounce back there for Armeo able to make it happen even with just being level two chased off of those Raptors still completes it here for Jojo in mid lane. And Jojo is the player that they completely rebuilt right back around. Yep. The star player for sure for the squad. That was just really nice overall for Evil Genius because you used to see once FBI and uh, Ignar were looking for their early recall, our male's early game plan was like, well, I can't go bot lane anymore. There's no one to attack. Oh, hey, what is that? Palafox is pushed up? Hmm. Let's see if I can make something happen here. So first blood on the board. We're going to see if our male can live up to the hype and now carry this snowball forward. All right, contracts. That ward is going to see him move in. Jojo knows it. Gives him a nice little thumbs up. And Armeo's on the hunt now that he's got the level advantage. Raptor respawn. Everybody knows the timer, even though he was chased off and didn't get first Raptors. You still know contract started there. Get back there. Four minutes. And it is defended once again. Yeah. So now the game for contracts is keep a bunch of perfective vision around Palafox's lane. Because even though both Armeo and JoJo's flash is down, so is Palafox. And he doesn't have a built-in mobility spell other than shield. And I'm just going to run away as fast as I can. Jojo can always close the distance with Body Slam. Armeo can too as with his W. And if they both get level six, Kyle Fox is in a world of trouble. He cannot overextend the lane if he does not have vision. Yeah, Jojo's landing a lot of poke onto him with the Comet Gragas mid here. Barrel after barrel for him. Ensures that he does get that extra trade damage and another Damn. good combo from Jojo. Oh, Palafox, you are playing with fire, my friend. And uh, Jojo is not level six yet, so he can't just go in for the Bomba all in, but he's getting close and the wave is not in a great spot for Palafox. Our male is gonna get spotted on this control ward. Contracts is here for the counter gank. They're not gonna get anything off of it, but it just ensures that Palafox does not die to this look from our man. I mean, their wave, they're trying to get this wave in. They're just <laughs> scrapping here. Palafox had very little mana left in addition to having very little health left. So trying to deal with the mid lane wave here, they end up even calling Ignar over as well. 
Recall finally goes off there for Palafox as and Jojo thins it out in mid and he'll get to the first level six. Yeah, that's gotta be super frustrating for Palafox too. He doesn't have teleport either. So he has to take the long walk of shame back to his lane. He's gonna be down at least a level now for the rest of the game. And if Jojo starts to use that advantage, like you said before, if he gets level six first and goes for the all in, Palafox is gonna be in trouble. Meanwhile, we take a nice little detour up towards top lane tank farm situation. Nice. <laughs> Push and wave in. Bunch of noodles slapping each Dokla other. will be able to collect here. All right, see if he drops any. He hit the cannon. And that's all there is to see on the top side. Nothing more, folks. <laughs> it's like when you go to the zoo, it's like, and we have our awesome lion exhibit, and they're sleeping. <laughs> Maybe next time, folks. We'll come in tomorrow. We've seen enough. <laughs> There's a three CS difference. Big, big action. <laughs> Finally, has got a nice push. Looking for maybe a drag rotation. Maybe. Yeah, I think with the, the crab secured, control ward down here on Dragon as well. Um, NRG just securing their vision first. Jojo does lose control of the wave a little bit here. Power Fox is now level six as well with the Annie. Flashes are coming up for both Jojo and Armeo, but so is Palafox's flash. They know their timer's on the same as that. But Jojo is looking for mid push at the moment while he's still bullying off Palafox. Armeo clearing out the vision. He has bot lane push at the moment. They know Contracts is on the top side of the map, so this should be first dragon secured for evil geniuses. The question is, can NRG reset in time and look for a Rift Herald off the back of it? Yeah, I think uh, NRG just gonna full give here as we see the Scion rotate through River too, so. Very nice stuff from Revenge as well, coordinating with the squad. Armeo moves in, as you said, with bottom lane push. He can start up the dragon. Mid lane pushes right back for them. Jojo gets control of the wave. And uh, with Scion, you always have that extra leverage. Yeah. Uh, being early in the game and having the option to just walk down river and ult through really does mean NRG commit to their decision. Give up dragon number one. Definitely don't need it. Definitely don't want to risk it. And on the flip side, you know, Contracts is the first one on the top side of the map with a nice clean reset as well. He's gonna hover to make sure that Jojo doesn't get the best of Palafox or can at least reserve some of his HP. I mean, Jojo's going super aggressive, but Armeo's on the Krugs, nice. so he's forced to use the explosive cast. At least that keeps himself alive and Palafox to reset. Yeah, really smart there from Jojo. And he absolutely dismantles NRG two to one here. Wow, Palafox is gonna die. Oh, yeah. what the? What was that? A flash auto attack? They go as the belly slam into the flash. Or yeah, we're gonna need to get the slow-mo replay. <laughs> that looks <laughs> because, so uh, scuffed. But yeah, I thought Pal Fox, I don't know why he was stepping up there, even though he, he he got the stun. He was such low health. And JoJo is able to make him pay for it with the flash play. Armeo then instantly starting up this rift held. Gotta be a little slow on this one though. Contracts is waiting in the wings, has keeper's verdict, the flash forward from Dokla. Called the Forge God, but Armeo nice flashes interrupt. over and nice interrupt from Jojo. The body slam denies the ultimate. Palafox is teleported oh. back, but the jungler's Jojo. already dead. And Jojo is absolutely smurfing this fight in the river. Double kill for the mid laner. Oh, he is sweaty, all right. Jojo is styling on the whole team here. Outplay after outplay. Jojo smurfing. Armeo's going to get another objective for the team, and Rafa. This gold lead is already ballooning pre 10 minutes into the game. Big, big gold off a of Rift Herald. You're also gonna be insured the extra plates with your Rift Herald. Holy moly. Okay, so let's get another look at it. I was already like, man, this is kind of questionable walking up to the wave here for Battle Fox. He puts his shield on, goes for the stun, and then walks forward still. And JoJo, yeah, it was, a, it was the flash auto. <laughs> Just hits him with the headbutt. Oh, meanwhile, all the action on the top side of the map, there is an isolated 2v2, Unforgiven, and Ayla just run down FBI, and it's the calling. Oh, man. The you, tickling gets the best of him that Rafa, time. Rafa, this team, it was blown up, and they're looking better than ever, actually. Evil geniuses coming out on fire in the LCS. That's right. I mean, game one, you know, we... we I want to temper expectations. I'm super hyped to see this kind of look day one, but there's still an entire summer split. Now, if Evil Geniuses carry this momentum, then I'm telling you, that will be a dark horse that we'll be looking at to challenge the top three. All right. So, JoJo then done such a good job this game, soaking up pressure in mid lane. He's constantly chunking down Palafox. Uh, and then he even absorbed extra summoner spells off of the jungler outplaying. You know, when uh, contracts flashed on him, he targeted 
power fox with the ultimate knowing that that's where the damage was going to come from got the better in that trade then was able to make the teleport back and trade for another one revenge is the off-screen hero here <laughs> getting extra minions Real. uh pushing down turret plates doing his top laner job you know you know when people thought revenge was coming to this roster they thought okay well maybe revenge will now get the place and carries but you still got jojo you still got unforgiven two star carry players and revenge i think is pretty happy to just take weak side this game and still play the scion tank and look for looks on engages later in the game and he's doing a great job cs wise he's making his impact known and the second dragon coming up in the next minute i think energy have no business contesting it whatsoever all right annie dropping the tibbers try and push it out here and a little bit of chunk damage on jojo but grog is notorious for the healing and can he get the 50 gold i think he got Thank to chain in the bank yeah I, I just don't know how energy get a chance to, to contest this dragon so kobe if you're energy in this instance are you are you just praying for late game at this point oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Pray, praying that the bleeding stops first as uh evil geniuses bring down four Contracts is here to be the combo breaker, though, on Poppy. Still about 30 seconds before the dragon, but the amount of pressure that Armeo and Jojo can just have looming over Energy's bot side. Contracts has to permanently sit here so that FBI and Ignar don't get absolutely blasted by a look from Evil Geniuses. The Rift Herald is going to come out. Unforgiven will get some more turret plates. Nice combo. I don't think Palafox dies, though, but he's chunking him out before the dragon fight. Yep, trade down here. Ultimate can delay the Rift Herald. I don't know if they can bring extra forces to actually make that mean anything, though. My slam from Contract into the wall, but it doesn't do anything that Unforgiven. Just keeps him out of the fight for a little bit, but the calling still comes through and gets major yeah. chip damage onto the carries of energy. So you, you can delay the Rift Herald, but you can't stop her. The rest of EG still here. They, uh, they do shove it in. She gets her charge off, they get their turret plates, and guess what? Dragon right on time as well. So much of a favorable damage trade for Evil Geniuses in the aftermath with Culling and, and Yumi Ultimate too, that yeah. probably this, this entire game is under a death grip. Energy are looking for some second wind, some room to breathe, but EG have a pretty tight grasp. And at this point... Judge is gonna get some, some more money mid lane as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the gold lead, you already said it's ballooning. At what point, it just becomes a rocket and just shoots straight up? <laughs> yeah, fairly soon, I would say. Fairly soon. Only 13 and a half minutes with two dragons and four and a half K. Uh, that is looking pretty juicy. They have a lot of tools to force as well here with the Gragas, with the Scion for Evil Geniuses. So. Yeah. Pretty easy to mine a lot of this turret plate money. Continue collecting all neutral objectives. And Yumi's even sharing some of her time now with the jungle. I wonder if uh, Ayla will intend to make their best friend Armeo in this game. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's too far gone. <laughs> it takes a while to catch back up. Yeah. Uh, and I think you actually want to be on Unforgiven. Uh, having Lucian be so mobile here and, and have that option um, he's got his Gale Force Spike already, has made pretty good use of the culling chunks and the lead that, uh, that the rest of the team has been able to acquire. Damn, energy really can't do anything. I, I, I think at some point the game will also start spewing out the pity prizes as well, the objective bounties. They're like, hey guys, it looks like you're in a rut. You need some help. Yeah. They Okay, we got a stun combo, our Mayo 50%, but should be able to walk away. So that that's the hope, right? Because if you're looking, all right, we need to stall, we need to go late game. Hopefully, energy can make some trades here and try and collect some of those objective bounties because them being up is one thing. Yeah. But these towers are also so healthy. Actually collecting one of those, being down 5,000 gold is very difficult. Maybe they can uh, pull a brute force play on the other side, but yeah. bottom's already been pushed in by Jojo. He's level 11 on the Gragas with his teleport, with his flash, and his plays have been on point thus far. Interrupting Orn to try and get second cast of ultimates off, you know, popping Palafox back. You know, that is actually one thing we'll have to keep track of Jojo for the arc of summer, because I think in spring, even though his mid lane dominance was never questioned, his time on the side lanes in the mid game and just knowing where to be and not overextending himself was always a criticism that we had for the young player. But Jojo so far, he's been pushing out lanes. He hasn't been getting caught out. 
and he's even looking proactively for roams and it puts pressure and energy so even though it doesn't look like anything is happening there's a lot of mind games and just pressure points that are being applied by evil geniuses that prevent energy for even looking at opportunities all right well that rift tail that juicy objective bounty which is bigger by the way than the outer turrets it's a full 500 base uh, for the second Rift Herald uh, objective bounty, if you're able to collect it. Mm -hmm. uh, that one immediately deleted from the map as well. <laughs> so that one, not an option either. Uh, and if they if they are aiming to get one, uh, it'd probably be on in two minutes when Dragon spawns on bottom side and NRG, if they could like overload top side and try and make a hard early push towards that top side turret, maybe uh, scrape together some gold for FBI. If, they, if they're able to get him up there and try and try and grab that top side turret objective bounty. But barring that one is going to be pretty hard for them to get some leverage here. And I think that evil geniuses will be very well aware of that as well and try and play a, a, a stopping play on top side, which are a lot easier to pull off with hex gates on the map too. Yeah, you're already starting to see the vision line from evil geniuses slowly bleed into the top side of the map. Now dragon is coming up in a minute and 20, but their pressure is felt universally on the rift. A teleport in from Jojo means that they're looking for this mid turret right before the dragon. The con oh, oh, contracts gets caught by the explosive cask while channeling that keeper's verdict. Great punish from EG. Oh my God. The beat drop of Poppy's own ultimate was actually a Gragas ult killing you. That was just, oh, it's actually painful to watch this beat down, Rafa. Jojo, the easiest ult of his life on that one. Gets him right into the, the uh, center of the team. They take down Poppy. They take down Topside with the Rift Herald too. This team is just easily marching forward. All right, now we're just looking at what time. That's okay? right. Because <laughs> we're approaching 18 minutes here, approaching 30 seconds on this dragon. That's going to be a, a pretty quick dragon number three for evil geniuses. That's right. And since they're already able to shove back out Topside, take down that Topside turret, uh, they should be able to deny energy the trade play. Yeah, evil geniuses are on track for soul pre 25 minutes at this point. So, not gonna lie to you, Kobe, for any energy fans in the, in the audience or at home right now, it's looking rough. You're hoping that maybe FBI just goes crazy and evil geniuses mess up and blunder big time, but evil geniuses, how clean can this win be? That is the next mark that they have to achieve because they've already done a great job early game. Mid game is going great. And Dokla is punted back by the explosive cast from JoJo. All right, Kragas ultimate down is actually big. They go for the flash Ooh. play. Bell Fox. Uh-oh. Oh, and the teleport's coming in. Revenge, who is your target? Who do you want to look for? Palfox is isolated out. He doesn't have to do anything. The unstoppable onslaught hits FBI in the face, and it buys time for the rest of Evil Geniuses to follow up. Our male was looking for a flash as he had the stun from the Annie as he possessed, but they can just kite on back. Dokla already used the call of the Forge God to slow down the fight, but it's still an numbers advantage. And Jojo Pio body slam flash. Oh my god, it's beautiful from Evil Geniuses. Decimating smash on top of it as well. They are wiping the floor with NRG. Yeah, they can take whatever they want now. The front door is open. Dragon will be collected by Armeo. And Jojo once again will lead the charge into enemy territory. He still had the flash. Even without the ultimate, goes for the big play, gets another one for them. Evil geniuses. Can they also deny this red buff? There's no way. Contracts has smite at least. <laughs> at least energy can get their own red. They've got a little bit of constellation prizes at the end of it, but man, this is almost a 10,000 gold lead under 20 minutes, Kobe. And this team just got put together. So really, really big ceiling for the Evil Geniuses squad. And here's a look for it. Jojo just got ejected by the Poppy ultimate. So he's not on screen right now. So EG have to kite. Our male is able to use his ultimate, get out of range there. So Dokla doesn't chop him back in. But then Jojo has re-arrived and they've got the numbers advantage. Easy body slam flash. They get the re-engage. FBI's down. That's the heart of the team there for energy. He's down means there's zero damage left. And EG can run it straight on forward. I'm really, really trying hard to not get overhyped for Evil Geniuses, but this is a damn good start, Kobe. Yeah, I think it's very exciting considering, you know, how, again, how fresh this squad is, how, how little time they've had together. Um, especially though, everybody is going to focus on JoJo, and rightly so, uh, going into full Grindlord mode yeah. during the, the break there. 
and coming out in his first game on fire. Summer JoJo hits different, man. Uh, motivation at an all-time high. JoJo already showing what he can do when he's at the top of his game. Oh, what a beautiful wombo! Explosive cast into the CC bounce house. That is the evil genius's composition. And the resets are coming in for Armeo as he possesses contracts. No jungler, no mid laner for energy. That's a free Baron if I've ever seen one. <laughs> yes, sir. Evil geniuses. Holy, rumors of their demise have been greatly exaggerated. Where are the haters now? That's, man. Oh, this is gonna be a great summer split, Kobe. I uh, like, I was also in the camp of like, man, you're, you're losing out on so many players. I mean, Inspired left such big shoes for Armeo to fill, but 5-0 and 4 in the Viego? That's hella good, man. <laughs> Keep it on, bro. It is, it is indeed. All right, Baird acquired 11,000, the gold lead here for Evil Geniuses, three dragons too. Uh, definitely a very, very good start for them. So we always track and we'll always try and be critical on how quickly and cleanly you can end out games like this. Um, you know, as we've seen already even a couple games today where there are stragglers getting picked off even by the team with, with, a, with a large lead, that simply has not happened to Evil Geniuses here. Uh, they have not given any space to NRG, and they have been able to outplay on every confrontation. So, Arctic Braggy Boy coming in, Ooh. right into Revenge. Que <laughs> bellissimo, oh my Sigh on lord. Sigh ultimate there for a nice little double bouncy. And they're pretty much dead. I mean, they have so much CC to just lock down and pick off targets one by one. Dokla, I'm sorry, buddy, but that jungle no longer belongs to your team. The only extent that you can be extended on is in your own base. And at this point, energy are clumping up as groups and cores because if you don't have a friend, you are going to die. All right, looks like topside minion wave get there first, take down topside first. They can get some damage over there. I guess Revenge is going to go test out the damage on these towers. Ah, doesn't feel like much. <laughs> Walked up and was like, hey guys, how much, uh, how much uh, does, can I shield with one W? Damn. Soul Furnace is doing great He's done work. the calculation. Now watch the payoff. That's right. He's going to have a big payoff <laughs> play here where they just, he's, all, he's got contracts on to 50% in front of his own tower. All right, they're going for it. A flash from Pal Fox. He finds JoJo, but he goes golden with the stasis. Contract Penny with the body slam him with the heroic charge. Oh, and the Wombo bounce out once again. There's just no point. Energy, they're throwing everything they got, but everything and, they and got is just not enough against Evil Geniuses. All right, let's see it. There are two members up for Energy. Can they defend here? Evil Geniuses, they've got Baron, so they should look for the end. Evil Geniuses, speed run percent. Can they maintain the clean game? 15 and zero. Oh. 48,000 gold to 34,000. They're throwing up the emotes. They're throwing down the Nexus Towers and they're corralling the minions in. The teleport is coming as well. Evil Geniuses with the cleanest game of the LCS Summer Split so far are looking to make their mark and run for the title. But Evil Geniuses are not gonna end the game quite yet. So they now have to recoup and make sure that they can take down Energy's last stand before they go for the end. Explosive captain there, FBI gets punted backwards, Unforgiven picks up one more to add to the KDA. They're on to the Nexus and Energy are doing everything they can. Can Evil Geniuses clean it out? No kills, no deaths whatsoever. Deathless game from the Evil Geniuses starts off their summer split. And in fact, a perfect game that is actually the perfect game from evil geniuses there have only been three in the history of the lcs and this one is now the fourth evil geniuses with the brand new roster come out game one perfect game pretty good debut yeah uh for the new lineup four perfect games ever in the franchise era and that fourth one belongs to the new Evil Geniuses squad of the summer 2023 split. What a fantastic debut, boys!
All right, back to the drawing board there for e uh, for for energy though. Yeah. Uh, that that was, was a rough one. They went a lot of scaling, but honestly, they got outplayed. Yeah. I mean, the the biggest focal point for them and the the hope was. FBI on this Zeri, you had the Melio as well to scale into the late game, but even when it wasn't that much affected by the top three core of Armeo, Revenge, and JoJo, we saw off screen Unforgiven and Ayla get a solo 2v2 kill on FBI. And that means all pressure points just completely collapse from energy in this opening draft. And it probably just mean for them that they severely underestimated Evil Genius's firepower at the start of the split. And they're gonna have to rethink about that when they get to the next game. All right, here's a look at how it ended. At this point, Energy know they're very desperate. They're so far behind, they've gotta go for something. So they make a play on the top side, they eject one player, they go for the Dokla ultimate here, but Contrax is already 50% health from mid lane there from Zion Chunks. And after that engage is Zonia's. Not really any follow up, not much hope left for them. Plenty of time there. Evil Geniuses, they can just push it forward with the power of that Baron buff. They end that thing every single day. All right, let's re examine our power rankings. <laughs> Quick little maths here. We've got to change a few things. Evil Geniuses looking quite nice. That's right. Well, we're going to be joining Jat and Jojo Pium for a Verizon post game interview. Take it away and congrats on a nice win today, Jojo. Yeah, thank you very much, Jojo. There's there's a lot. There's a lot to unpack here. Uh, you guys had a perfect game. There's only been four in the franchise era. This is actually one of them. Mm -hmm. um, I first want to ask about all the paper towel by your, your spot, because that's something we haven't seen before, that much at least. I mean, like, the water bottles are so sticky when you touch them. I don't know why. I don't know what Ride does that makes it so sticky when you touch the water bottle. So it gets my hands dirty, so... Like, I don't want to play with a dirty hand, you know? Because sure. like, it just feels sticky on my mouth. So that's why I use the paper towels to cover it up. And yeah. yeah. Clean hands, clean game. I want to ask you about a little bit of the trip to Korea. Uh, I've heard through the grapevine, you went to Korea and you came back like a new person. Like, you're just so much stronger in scrims, at least. Do you Have you f felt like the same thing is true? I don't know, to be honest. I mean, I feel like going to Korea definitely helped me a lot. Um, I versed, like, some of the best mids there. And I got to practice against just good players. So... I mean, it definitely helps me, and I think I just, after last play, I realized, like, I fucked up, you know, so I just gotta, it's like a comeback season now, so I just gotta really just focus up this split, so I think it's both, like, Korea made me better, but also I think my mentality changed. Fair enough, and also, I feel like with your career, you, you, so much in 2022, you won spring, and then you're kind of like favorites all throughout summer. Um, you mentioned you had a bad split, but then also you have four new teammates. So what are, like, I'm actually curious, just outside noise, being ignored, what are your expectations for the team this split? I mean, coming in, I had no clue that it would make these changes in Korea. Like, I, I knew by the end of Korea, so I was like, that's crazy. But um, the players we got were really good, and I really like them a lot. So we have a lot of, I feel like we have a lot of potential on this team. I think we can definitely contest for being the best team. Um, I feel like if I said that before, people would think I'm like... You had to have the one game yeah, first. I gotta, yeah. I gotta play a game first to show it, but I definitely think we have potential. All right, one down, 17 to go. Jojo, congratulations. Thank you very much for the interview. And let's send it back to Rafa. Thank you so much, Jad and Jojo. FlyQuest versus 100 Thieves is next. But first, we've got some behind the scenes of how Samsung SSD powers the LCS. This durable T7 Shield portable SSD made the trip to the beach with the LCS photo team a breeze as well. So make sure you pick and stock up on these guys. So, But after the break, we'll be kicking it off for our final game of the day. Make sure you tune in and you stick around. Hey, I'm Melissa from the Riot Esports photo team. We shoot thousands of photos on any given day, so having a reliable storage device is super important to us. That's why we love the Samsung T7 Shield portable SSD. On a shoot like today, we start sorting and editing right away. With T7 Shield, we can seamlessly transfer massive files in seconds. These drives are also water resistant, dust resistant, and drop resistant, which means we can work anywhere and we don't have to worry about losing files. 